Welcome to Burning Bright, a weekly podcast presenting poetry and prose from Passager. You probably already knew this, but I just learned that September 8th was National Ampersand Day. An ampersand, in case you'd forgotten, is that little symbol that means and. It started out typographically as a connected E and T. E and T spell et, of course, which in Latin means and. And it's celebrated on September 8th because that date can be written almost entirely with ampersands. You can see an example of that if you go to the transcript for this episode on PassagerBooks.com's Burning Bright page. On this episode of Burning Bright, four poems whose titles connect things. We'll start with an obvious one, Cause and Effect, by Marilyn Walner. I put on the porch light and dusk falls, bring in the paper and the sun rises. I have made a mountain recede by simply walking toward it. Marilyn Walner's poem, Cause and Effect, from Passager, Issue 68. Marilyn said, I am a 90-year-old poet, eternally vigilant to keep technology at bay, writing my poems using a pre-World War II manual typewriter. Next, Arts and Crafts, by Ann Miles. Rectilinear, of dark-stained oak and now time-darkened, this plain and solid chair, not large, where I, not large myself, can rest feet firmly on the floor. Whatever dining set it came from was lost far away from here. We travel together, mateless, wherever we end up. If I sit down on it, worrying about a pandemic or other terrors I can't avert, I know I'm not the first. It's old enough to understand transience, standing under being what it does as everyone comes and goes. It's a chair on which to listen to a snowplow pass, the furnace hum, and the sound of my own breathing, or to trace a pain so cherished it encloses me in a nutshell, until I wonder what would happen if I gave it up. Letting go attachment. Isn't that the greatest art we're here to learn? And it could be a chair on which I notice a hidden buzzing deep inside, and think of the mythic bug in Walden, who chewed through the dry apple wood of a sixty-year-old table leaf, emerging to astonish all and claim its summer life. And Miles's Arts and Crafts, from Passager, Issue 72. And said, The Thoreau passage has inhabited my mind as an image of rebirth as long as I can remember, and the image of wood furniture snapped it into relevance here. Patricia Zilius said, It infuriates and saddens me that millions of people are unwitting, unpaid lab rats. I find it challenging to write about subjects like this without getting preachy. Here's her poem, Poison and Purity. Stop, my son says. I don't want to hear it. You'd think by now I'd know to keep my mouth shut. But here I am again, Cassandra in his kitchen, listing grains they spray with Roundup. I can't look at anything without seeing poison. Butter drips down my grandkids' chins, and when they grin, bits of corn stick out between their teeth. I can almost hear their tiny gut flora sloshing around in glyphosate. Even when I tuck them into bed, my face pressed to their tummies, I smell the perfume from the dryer sheets my son insists on using. Avert your eyes, he told me this morning, as he pulled another one from the box. And late at night, when I can't sleep, I picture clouds of methane. O oh, vast Siberia! O oh, thawing Arctic tundra! O oh, someone save me from myself! Choose joy, the poets say, and I must douse for it over and over. How can I raise up and carry from one day into the next that one small globe of clear, clean water? It vibrates for a moment on the hot facts and fizzles away. Poison and Purity, Patricia Zilius, from Passager, Issue 67. And she's happy to report that her son has stopped using dryer sheets. We'll end this National Ampersand Day celebration with 104-year-old Sarah Yerke's sonnet, Quilts, 
and verses. Our country butcher's mother quilted spreads, log cabin, pinwheel, sunshine, checkerboard, composed of shapes of colored cloth, a hoard of patches hid beneath her trailer's beds. I read, enlarging my supply of words, who wait unlike the patches in my head. I call on them to realize unsaid ideas circling like a flock of birds. Both verse and quilt need reasons to survive, expressions of a message, a design inspiring to a reader line by line, or comforting while dreams become alive. Creators all will find that in them, curled, a valued insight waits to be unfurled. Sarah Yerke's Sonnet, Quilts, and Verses from Passenger, Issue 61. A former sculptor and architect, Sarah said that at this stage of her life, she enjoys making patterns out of words. To subscribe to or learn more about Passager and its commitment to writers over 50, go to PassagerBooks.com. You can download Burning Bright from Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, Audible, and a host of other podcast apps. For Kendra, Mary, Christine, Roseanne, and the rest of the Passager staff, I'm John Shore.